Hey, it's Nikki Thompson, and you're listening to Tea with Nikki, embracing your sexual energy. And today's episode, I'm going to be talking all about the power of pleasure. So before we get into that, I would just love to say thank you so much for listening and tuning in. And if you feel like any of these episodes would be relevant to family or friends, I would be so deeply grateful for you to share these on social media or share them with a text message or messenger. And you can do that through Spotify or iTunes or even sharing from my website, NikkiThompson.com. I would be super grateful because this is what it's all about is getting this message out to women who really need to hear this. So let's get into it. Now, last week I was talking all about energy management. And if you haven't listened to that episode, I would urge you to go back because that was amazing and really, really relevant for right now when things are kind of all over the place. And this week I'm talking about the power of pleasure. Now, last week I was running a 10-day orgasm challenge, which has been an amazing free challenge that I decided to run. And it's all about tapping in and embracing our sexual energy, but focusing on how can we harness that energy and bring it to all areas of our life? How can we bring it to being a better parent? How can we bring it to more creativity for our business or our work or our craft, whatever we're doing? How can we harness that to improve our relationship? And that's when we're talking about the power of pleasure is often we come, we, we start thinking about the life that we have and we set goals and things like that. But often it's because we are determining those goals from a place of fear. It's usually, um, I want to go to the gym because I don't want to be fat or I want to save money because I don't want to be broke. Now, these are very, very black and white examples, but You get the idea. We're coming from a place of fear. Like I want my kids to go to this great school because I don't want them to, you know, fall fall behind in life. Um, I want them to succeed at sport because I don't want them to be picked on or whatever it is, whatever kind of goals you might have in your life. And for me, it's there are so many times that I've made decisions based on fear and my biggest example for me is uh, for my body. You know, I wanted to go to the gym because like, oh, I, I want to be able to fit into a nice bikini or, you know, I want to get my pre-baby body back and all this kind of stuff. And that's coming from a place of fear because I felt unhappy with my current body because she had given birth to three children and grown three children and she did not look the way that she looked when she was 20 and all of these types of things. And it was coming from a place of fear or disappointment or, you know, whatever it is. But when we start looking at embracing our sexual energy, we start to come from a place of pleasure. We come from a place of love and compassion for ourselves, for our body, for our energy, for our planet. You know, when we're looking at sexual energy, um, the easiest way to relate to that is through orgasm because it's uh, a clear way for people to kind of understand But what we're talking about is really that connection with our physical self. And when we do orgasm, it's like this surge of energy. Now, for me, I know that I'm often in my head, like I'm often in my head in most most of the day in different different parts of my life, whether I'm in the kitchen making lunches, I'm thinking what's next. If I'm driving the car, I'm thinking, hey, what what else do I need to be doing today? If I'm having a conversation with someone, I'm often thinking, how should I respond to this conversation? I'm not always listening. I'm not always in the moment. And this is a practice that I've been working through. And what has helped with orgasm and embracing that sexual energy and, and this whole journey is that I get out of my head and I'm in my body. Now, I don't know about you, and if you haven't had a, had an orgasm, then I definitely would urge you to, um, you know, you can get in touch with me and I can give you some resources that can help you with that. But when you have an orgasm, you cannot be in your head. It doesn't work. Like you just cannot reach climax if you're in your head thinking, oh my God, okay. Oh my God, that's flapping. Oh my God, I can feel my belly jiggling. Oh my God, what's he thinking? And this is if you're with a partner. 
Um, oh my God, what's he think? Oh my God, the lighting. Oh, like if that's what I'm thinking, I cannot orgasm at all. However, if I just embrace my body, my fucking amazing body that has given birth to three children, that has lived my, like helped me live my amazing life the past 34 years, then if I just embrace that, I'm totally able to orgasm. I'm totally able to be in my body and just feel, you know, I'm in the present moment. And what I, what my whole message is about is that when we're in our, in that moment, in our physical bodies and reconnected with our physical bodies, we can do shit. Like we are in our creative sense. We can, it improves our confidence. It helps us to appreciate our bodies. It helps us to be like, to be in the present moment. It helps to energize us. All of these things. This is the power of pleasure. So once we take this out of the bedroom, so away from orgasm, and when I talk about orgasm, I certainly don't mean, you know, you have to be with a partner. In fact, for me, the best orgasms are often on my own. But it's all about the, the fact that we're giving ourselves that permission to have that time to ourselves. It's saying that we deserve pleasure. It's saying that our bodies deserve this love and attention and nurturing. And it's often not what we're doing in our, the rest of our life. You know, if we look in a mirror, do we look at all the things that we love about our bodies or are we looking at, oh my God, I could lose a bit of weight. Jeez, I look bloated. Holy shit. What happened here? What's, is this a pimple? Like I shouldn't be getting pimples in my 30s. Is this normal? Oh shit. There's like a long little black hair on my chin. Those are usually the things I think about. Now I look at my body and I'm like, fuck yeah, look at that. And I'm, I'm going to be honest, this is not every day, but this is most days now. And everything's still jiggling just like it was a few years back. You know, the boobs are a little bit saggy or they have really nice, I love my boobs, like breastfeeding three children and they still look fucking amazing. I'm really happy with that. I've got this extra pouch from on my belly from having a Caesar and I spent a whole year trying to lose weight because I wanted to have a tummy tuck. And now I'm like, fuck it. I, uh, you know, I'm quite happy with it. You know, my partner loves it. Like he doesn't, has no issues whatsoever. And I'm like, well, why would I spend all this time on surgery for what? Like my body is amazing. And so it's taken a lot of work to get to this point. It's taken a lot of time, patience and acceptance and just oh, total appreciation of my body. And this is the power of pleasure. It's through doing that I then feel more confident to wear swimmers. I feel like I deserve to spend money on nice clothes. Whereas before I would be like, oh, if I lose 10 kilos, then I'll go buy that nice Lorna Jane outfit that I really want. Or if I lose 10, five kilos, I'm going to buy that beautiful dress in a size 12 or whatever it is. You know what? It doesn't fucking matter. Why do you need to be at a particular size, why does that even matter? And I'm talking all about body issues because for me, that's been my journey. That's been my hold up in my whole life since I was about seven. I had a lot of issues back then and it's always been about my body. And, you know, I still have my days and I'm like, fuck, I'm not going shopping today because I just feel a bit bloated and I don't want to try stuff on that I know is not going to fit. Um, you know, but you might not have body issues, which is brilliant. And I'm super, super happy for you. But you might have other issues that you just don't feel 100% confident about. You might not feel confident about starting a business that you really want to start. You might not feel confident about going for a job or going for a promotion. So it's about tapping into that power. Because if we look at most men, and, and this is I remember reading this statistic and I'm going to get the numbers wrong because I don't remember the exact numbers, but I just remember the the stats being quite shocking was that um, when people see an advert for a job, women 
will need to make sure they're hitting at least 90% of the requirements of that position before they're even going to apply. Whereas men look at about hitting about 40% as a minimum before they apply. Because men are just like, yeah, yeah, I could probably do that. Whereas women are like, oh no, unless I'm fucking amazing at this job, I'm not even going to apply. And it's about confidence. Like we can make, we could probably work it out. We're just as smart as men. You know what I mean? Like, but it's about confidence and tapping into that energy because I feel, and this is my belief, is that society is, and I'm certainly not men bashing here whatsoever, but I do feel like society is very masculine focused. We have that hustle mentality. We have that, you know, got to get all these things done on our to-do list. We've got deadlines. We've got rushing. We've got, you know, timeframes that we've got to get things done in. And yes, we do need to have, we need to have time frames so that we can get shit done. Otherwise nothing would happen, but it's all from a very rush, 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 rush kind of point of view rather than, and even like our working week, it's like solid 40 hours. You've got to be at your desk from nine to five, blah, blah, blah. Rather than give me your best few hours, be all in. Like for me, I know I work best in three hour blocks. After three hours, I'm, I'm out. My brain is wandering I cannot be creative for longer than a three-hour block, yet every job I've ever worked at is an eight-hour block. So for the next five hours, I'm not doing that much. Like I will be able to do the work, but it won't be my best work. And from, from running my own business, I know I can get eight hours worth of work of being in a job done in about three hours if I just lock myself down and get that shit done. I know I can do it. And that's how I operate. That's a very feminine flow state that I get into to be able to work. So the power of pleasure is something that we can harness and utilize in so many different areas of our life. And this is definitely something I've utilized to be a better parent. And we've got a guest coming on, Jacinta Lowe's, who's going to be talking all about parenting and how that impacts, like how embracing her sexual energy impacts her parenting. And I do feel as though it impacts my parenting in that I am more fun. I am more confident. I want to go and do more fun stuff. I'm not as tired because I'm managing my energy. I'm, you know, having my space. I'm having my, you know, I'm embracing my sexual energy I'm embracing my feminine side that I can be a better parent. So this is something I've been working through and I've had, a, you know, I've had a decade of, ex- of parenting experience and this is definitely something that I have really enjoyed over the past four years looking at how can I be a better person and that is because I had locked down that whole sexual side of me because I felt a lot of shame. I had a lot of negative beliefs holding me back around what sex is and that women shouldn't masturbate and that good girls don't do this and all that kind of shit. And it stifled me. It made me less confident because it was confusing because our sexual energy is like our universal energy. It is our creative energy. We literally make humans from that energy. And yet we don't harness it for any other part of our life. It's crazy, absolutely crazy. And so I would love for you to start thinking about how could you anchor in that energy? Now I'm going to give you a couple of ideas. So for me, I love to use, well, I use lube regularly when I masturbate because it's so much easier, so much kinder to my vagina. And I also like to have a candle like and that is a scent at the moment. I've got a beautiful Byron Bay candle and it's called Lotus Flower. I think yes, Lotus Flower is the scent. Now for me, I have that candle and that anchors in that energy. And you know what? I have that candle on my desk as well because again, it anchors in that creativity. Now you could do something different. You could get like a spritzer bottle And maybe you love lavender or lemon or lime or whatever the fuck you like and put that in a spritzer bottle and you could have that on on your pillow when you are playing 
And then you could also spray that when you're in the car or spray that when you're at work or spray that when you're doing this school run, whatever it is. And it anchors scents, always anchor in different emotions and different feelings. And that could be something. It could be a song. It could be um, a piece of jewelry, a beautiful ring or bracelet or something like that. What is it? Now, for me, I, I do actually have this ring. I bought this ring down in Byron Bay. Now, Byron Bay is my favorite place in the world. It's my it's my safe place. It's my fun place. It's my retreat place. And I bought this ring for my birthday a couple of years back. And I'd just gone through separation. Like we were still like in the depths of that at the time. And I really wanted to buy myself my own ring, my own beautiful piece of jewelry. And I... I fucking loved it. I knew what I wanted. I had this vision of this blue ring with silver. And to me, that represents the new Nikki. It represents the Nikki that's embraced her sexual side. It represents the Nikki who's confident and creative and doesn't give a fuck what other people are thinking of me. Although, to be honest, I still do on occasion a lot of the time, but I'm working through it. And this is what that ring represents. So again, it could be a piece of jewelry. So what could you get? What could you do to anchor in that fucking, that amazing feeling that we get that this is who we are? We are amazing. We can do awesome things in our life. This is the power of pleasure. So I'm going to leave you with that. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. As I mentioned at the start, if you want to share this episode, I would be so deeply grateful for that. And don't forget to tune in every Wednesday as well. We have guest experts. I just said every Wednesday. It's not true. I'm lying right now. It's sporadically on Wednesdays, depending on how many interviews I do, but they are coming out. So you can do those listen to those. These are incredible women doing all sorts of different things and embracing the shit out of their sexual energy. So if you want to be a guest on this podcast, send me an email, Nikki, N-I-C-K-Y, Nikki at NikkiThompson.com. I would love to chat with people who are listening to the podcast. Absolutely love it. So I hope you have the most incredible week and I really do hope you have some amazing orgasms this week. I really do from the bottom of my heart. Bye.